Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to observe the Heisenberg uncertainty principle at your own house. And I'd like to thank KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later on. What I have here is two razor blades connected to a crescent wrench. So you can see that I can make this gap further apart or closer together just by opening and closing my wrench here. Up until quantum mechanics was invented, it used to be thought that the accuracy of your experiment was only limited by the accuracy of your instruments. But then a physicist named Heisenberg came along and he showed that no matter how accurate your instruments are, you still have a limitation on how accurate you can measure things. He showed that there's fundamental limits in which you can measure two properties of an object at the same time. The uncertainty principle equation looks like this. So I'm gonna put a delta x. So that just means your variability in position times your variability in momentum equals h over 4 pi. Now this h is just a small constant called Planck's constant. So this is kind of frustrating. It means that we can't absolutely know the position of something and the momentum of something. We can only absolutely know one or the other. So now we know the theory behind it. Let's set up an actual experiment to see if we can see the same results. So the particles that I'm going to be using in this experiment are light particles or photons. Now remember photons don't have a specific mass but they do have a momentum and so the Heisenberg uncertainty principle still applies to them just fine. The way I'm going to be measuring the position of the photons is by sending it through these two razor blades and I can get these razor blades closer together or further apart. So what I know is that any light that makes it through these two razor blades had to have gone through in this area. So that means that my delta x is related to the gap between these two razor blades. So I can decrease my delta x by closing it or I can increase it by opening it like this. And then how I'm going to measure the momentum in the x direction is to see the spread of light. So if all of our particles come through and they hit the same spot right here, then that means they don't have a lot of variability in their momentum. But if one particle hits here, and then one hits here, and then one hits here, and one hits over here, then that means that in the x direction, there's a lot of variability in its momentum. So what I mean by that is when we shine our laser light through, we can look at the spread on some backstop. And if the spread is large, that means there's a large variability in momentum. But if the spread is small, that means there's a small variability in momentum. So the gap that it goes through represents the variability in position. I'm measuring its position at this point exactly. And some distance down the way, I'm gonna measure on a backstop its spread. And that's gonna tell me about the X component of its momentum when it went through this position right here. So I'm gonna start off shining it with a really wide gap right here. So our variability in X is really big. You can see we come down here, go to the other end and we see the spread of the light is pretty small. So it's just a tiny little laser light, just like you'd predict on the other end. And let's measure the width on this backstop here. Okay, so that's about how wide my beam is. Okay, now we're gonna close our gap more. Now I've significantly decreased the variability in the X direction because they're so close together now. And you can see on the back of it here that it's actually blocking some of the light. So less light is gonna be hitting at the end there, but let's go measure how big that dot is now. So this is a little bit odd. We can see our two markers here for the original beam, but now we have this long spread of light off the edges here. So I'll turn the lights off. It's hard to say where this actually ends, but I'm just gonna to try to make a guess here. Looks like it dims out about right here. And it dims out about right here. So look how big our variability in momentum is now. So the width of the beam actually got wider when we narrowed that beam. Now let's watch it continuously as I close the razor blades. You can see the light starts out bunched together, but as I close the razor blades, the light spreads out more and more and more until it even gets wider than my markers that I put on there before. But then as I open up the razor blades again, the light gets bunched back together. So as counterintuitive as it seems, the harder you try to squish light into a smaller area, the more it spreads out. Now I already know what you're thinking. You're thinking this isn't some weird thing with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but it's actually just the diffraction of light because light is a wave, and so when you send it through something small, it diffracts and spreads out. But if you're thinking that, the joke's on you because this background is actually a glow-in-the-dark background. Now this red laser light has a very high intensity, so high that it should be able to charge this backstop, 
but it's not charging it. That's because light isn't only made of waves. If it were made of waves, it should be able to charge the backstop, but it's not. It's simply because the particles of red light coming through don't have enough energy per particle. If I get a little bit of light of something that has more energy per particle, then it can charge this backstop. But if I just get a non-laser light, blue ultraviolet light, you can see I can easily charge it. And so the particle nature of light is one of the reasons why this backstop glows. And so you can't say that light is just waves because we're also seeing its particle nature right now. So they have to have been particle-like when they left the laser. Now interestingly enough, the uncertainty principle doesn't just apply to momentum and position. In quantum mechanics, certain pairs of variables are related to each other. And when they're related to each other, they're called canonically conjugate variables. So it turns out that position and momentum are conjugate variables, so they go hand in hand. And so you can make a relationship between them with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. But position and momentum aren't the only ones. You can actually make the same relationship with energy and time as well. So for time and energy, you can just switch out position and momentum and you get the same equation. So the more accurately you know the energy of an object, the less accurately you can tell the time in which you measured that energy. Now before we end, I want to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor, KiwiCo. KiwiCo is a really cool subscription service that sends these awesome crates to you monthly. So KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics, from toddlers to teens and even adults. What I love about boxes like this is when you make something yourself, you get to know the ins and outs of it and understand it correctly. It's one thing to have somebody tell you how something works, but it's another thing to actually do it yourself and see how it works. They have super cool hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to concepts in science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Each monthly crate is designed by experts, including industrial engineers and ex-aerospace engineers. As you know with my channel, I like teaching you how to do hands-on things. That's because the way you learn something is by doing it, and KiwiCo teaches that in their monthly crates. The crates are convenient and include everything you need, so you don't need to worry about running to the store to get extra supplies. So if you want to try out KiwiCo, go to kiwico.com slash the action lab or click the link in my description to get 50% off any crate you choose for the first month. And thanks again to KiwiCo for sponsoring this video. And thanks for watching another episode of the action lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest video. And check out Action Lab Shorts, which is the second channel I have where I do experiments similar to this channel, but I do them in less than a minute, so a lot shorter videos. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.